have had so much fun this week bragging about you. Um, amazing. Last Sunday, we, we made available 64 packets of opportunities to adopt somebody spiritually uh, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for 2019. Uh, we, we made an opportunity to, you know, uh, sign up for a Thanksgiving dinner. That's actually like to this afternoon at four o'clock, uh, you know, be here 315 <laughs> with your food. Then we're going to have a little encouragement and then we're going to be ready to welcome these families. And uh, 64 uh, people in our community for a Thanksgiving dinner, um, Christmas dinner, adopting spiritually. Uh, so both the meals, Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner went like whew, filled up. The list filled up like by the end of third service, full. 64 people needing to be spiritually adopted and encouraged and prayed for and, you know, come alongside. Went, gone, taken. I've had so much fun this week bragging on you. What a great church family. Thank you. I, you know, thank you, church family. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Would you pray for this? <laughs> this is huge. Would you pray for this program, this event, today, this afternoon, Thanksgiving, starting the relationship? Uh, you know, pray for what's going to happen at Christmas. Just pray that the Lord would use this to advance the kingdom. Amen? Mm, 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 mm. Uh, koinonia, our sermon series for this month, Koinonia. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, tells us that those first followers of Jesus devoted themselves to the Koinonia, the fellowship. Here's our working definition we've been using for uh, koinonia is my contribution for the success of us. My contribution for the success of us, or, or really it's our contribution for the success of us. So we've taken this whole month of November just to consider our contributions for the success of us. And I love seeing koinonia in action, don't you? In fact, this whole Christmas program, this whole adopt a family thing for today, Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner and Christmas program, really it's all about koinonia. It really is our contributions toward the success of us. And you know, it's God's sector of the kingdom here at the crossing. It's so exciting. And I love seeing it in action. And I love seeing it. I, I especially love when I see the, even the kids are getting it. A couple weeks ago, an eight-year-old come running, running up, preacher, when I get older, I'm going to give you lots of money. Sweet. Why? Well, because my daddy says you're one of the poorest preachers we've ever had. <laughs> well, at least he gets it. My contribution to the success of us, right? Today's passage is so koinonia. You're going to love it. Our passage today is so koinonia. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 4. There are different gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but in all of them and in everyone, the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. May the Lord bless the preaching and the responding to his word today. Amen. I love this passage. There are different gifts. But the same spirit distributes them. There are different service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but in all of them and in everyone, the same God at work. To each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. 
I think it's obvious right from the get go, there are some things in this passage that are the same and there are some things in this passage that are very different. Same and different. T today, I want us to improve our koinonia by uniting on the things that are same. And then let's appreciate the things that are different. That's all I want to do today. Let's unite on the things that are same and then let's appreciate the things that are different. Uh, first, I want to focus on uh, what, is, what is the same. What is the same? Our text says there are different gifts, but the same spirit. And there are different services, but the same Lord. And there are different workings, but the same God. I call this what, um, I call this a Trinitarian text. A, Trinita a Trinitarian text. Inside this one paragraph, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit all show up. It's a Trinitarian text. All three members of the Godhead are here. Here's what I've learned in my studying of the Bible. Anytime all three members of the Godhead show up, we better pay extra close attention because something important is really happening. In the text, we have God the Father mentioned, God the Son, and God the Spirit, a Trinitarian text. Maybe we ought to find out what's really going on here. This is huge. And what I want to point out is really, first of all, that the same source. There are different gifts, and we're going to, in a minute, we're going to talk about those different gifts, but the same spirit. And there's different services, we're going to talk about that, but, but, but the same Lord. And, and there's different workings, we're going to talk about that. But the same God. You see, the source is the same. The source is the same, and which tells me that the first thing that get, gets my attention is really the focus is on not the gift, but the giver. That's exactly right. The focus of this text is not on us. It's not on our gifts. It's on the giver of the gifts. The attention belongs on him. It's all about him. You and I have because he has given. Amen? Amen. Hey, that's just a perspective of maturity, and that's really what stewardship comes down to. It's all his, and it's all from him. And the attention is not on the gift, on the giver. The same source. I think that's pretty cool. And then verse 7 really gives us the same goal. Did you see verse 7? Now, to each, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The common good of us. This is, koin, this is koinonia. We've been, we've been all given different gifts and different services, different workings, but it's all to be used for the common good, the same goal, the common good. And really what we're talking about is using our gift in this as a contribution to the success of us. Does that make sense? So let's unite on what is the same. It's the same source. It's all God giving and providing. It's all God. And for the common good. It's all from him. For our good, koinonia, using my gift in this for the good of us. I love that. So simple. But let's focus on what's different. Our text says there are different gifts, but the same spirit who distributes them. And there are different service but the same Lord, and different workings, but in all of them, and in everyone, the same God at work. Let's look at what's different. Specifically, first, there are different gifts. There are different gifts. Literally, it, it, it refers to grace gifts. What we're talking about here are grace gifts. You've been given some gifts, some abilities, some talents that, that are from the Lord. They're grace gifts. They're from his grace, from his power, from his grace. They're grace gifts. 
You have. Romans chapter 12 says something like, each of us have been given different gifts from his grace. And then it just lists some examples. For example, there's the gift of um, prophesying and serving, the gift of teaching, the gift of encouragement, the gift of showing mercy, the gift of leading. And the emphasis, really, you know, you have one of those gifts. Uh, but I just want you to understand that you, every one of you, have, been re have received a grace gift from God. From him, out of his grace, you have a gift. Now, here's what you need to know. Some of you need to be reminded of this. You can't do everything. Really, by design, God's design, you can't do everything. That's why we need each other. You can't do everything, but you can do something really well. Can't do everything, but you can do something really well. And the design is that we would do that something for the common good. And maybe I ought to throw in there uh, that you can't help everyone. But you can help someone with your giftedness. Amen? There are different gifts. There are different grace gifts from him. You have one or two or some of you are five talent men and women. Grace gifts. I love that. The second, the second thing, there are different gifts, yes, and then there are different service. Interesting word. The word means active service with regard to the mission. Active service with regard to the mission. And there are different services. The word is the same word for ministry. There are different ministries with regard to the mission. There are different ministries. I want to say it this way. There are different opportunities. There are different opportunities for, by which you can use your gift in this. Here at the crossing, we translate that into what we call our ministry teams. We have different ministry teams. We have all kinds of ministry teams, a place where you just can serve. A couple weeks ago, I shared with you a Sunday strategy. Remember Sunday plus two? Remember that? And I encouraged every one of you, uh, you know, with a Sunday plus two strategy. First of all, Sunday. When Sunday comes, you be here. Now, if you're throwing up, don't be here. Don't share everything you have. But, and, and you know, and if you're called to work, you know, we understand that. Uh, you know, if you're traveling, hey, go, go visit another church for the experience of it. It'll be so awesome. But on Sunday, you be here, and you be here ready to celebrate him and to serve each other, right, through personal connection. Celebrate and serve. But then there was a plus two, and the plus two was, first of all, study in a group. Every week, study in a group. Now, the group could be with your family or a group of friends with a four before, or you could be here for a refill or a huddle or women's Bible study. Hey, study in a group. Study the word of God in a group. So it's, it, just, it just brings things alive. But that plus two, the second one is serve on a team. We want to encourage every member of this church family to be serving on a team, a ministry team. Uh, cool things happen when we're working together as a team. I want to share with you a list of our ministry teams. And I, w I want to do so, uh, you know, some of you are already on a ministry team and you are amazing at what you do. Keep it up. Job well done. Our ministry teams are, you know, are thriving. So many good things happening through our ministry team. But if you do, are not yet part of a ministry team, I want you to kind of pay attention to the Lord's. <clears throat> I'm going to go through this list. I'm going to briefly explain what they are. And if you feel the Lord's, <clears throat> that's probably the team he wants you on. I've been asking the Lord this week, you know, today, <clears throat> a lot of people. Now, wife, don't think you're the role of God right now. Just relax. <clears throat> ministry teams. 
If you don't have yet, not yet have a team after the service today, there's all kinds of tables scattered throughout. Find the ministry team that you felt the <clears throat> and talk to the captain. They're going to answer questions. They're going to be there. They're going to get your contact information. They're going to welcome you to the team. Here we go. Uh, it's a big list. First impressions, our welcoming team, our greeting team. It's so important that this team keeps making sure that we are always a welcoming church. So whether it's on the patio or at the front door, you know, just, you know, welcoming team. If you love people, you're great with people, that's a great team for you. That's a great team. Look at this. Guardian security. Man, we have such a great team, a guardian team, just for our safety. Right now, they're out in the foyer, just making sure the parking lot's fine and the foyer's fine and our kiddos are protected and, you know, and, and then the, uh, we're protected, the guardian team. Uh, you, know, and the, that's, you know, that's your bag. Sign up. They want you. Facilities management team. Oh, I love this team. This team keeps us going. We, you know, we have a multi-million dollar facility and they're give, making sure we're good stewards of it. And you know, job well done. Facility management team. So if you, you know, you've got organization skills and you've got, you know, hands on, that's your team. Uh, facility management team. Communion preparation team. Every Sunday morning, they're coming in, they're preparing, they're making, you don't even think about it. You're just, you just get the loaf in the cup when it comes, right? Somebody has to put that together. I tried it once, spilled the grape juice everywhere. That's not me. Staying on, still in my pants. But anyway, yeah, communion preparation. Then we have communion, more, uh, Sunday morning communion servers. You know, when it's time for the Lord's Supper, you'll notice some people get up and go back and get the chair. Hey, maybe that, you wouldn't be available to that. You know, find that, find that table, sign up, get your contact. Sunday morning, compassion team. Oh man, the heart of our church. Man, if your giftedness is in high compassion, they kicked me off. I tried, they kicked me off that team. Hey, sign up for Compassion. There's so many incredible things are happening through this team. Loving on people, heart of our church. Uh, salty old saints, you know, uh, old, not old, but, you know, 55 plus. Uh, so many great things. In fact, there's, their table's just outside the wall here. They got some sign-up things with an event coming up with the Home of the Brave uh, that uh, you could provide a Christmas, uh, great Christmas for them. Uh, check out that table, uh, Salty Old Saints. Worship team. You know, we got singers and musicians and, you know, you, you got some musical giftedness. Hey, get there, right? Get there. Uh, tech team. Technology, it is so great when it's working. Amen? It's amazing when it's work, but when it's, uh, we, need people, we need people on that. The tech team, uh, right behind the sound booth, worship team, tech team, you can sign up with that right after, uh, afterwards, filled to the brim. Oh yeah, how many of you love coffee? Yeah, all right, filled to the brim. Hey, we just have, you know, people making sure people got caffeine so they can stay awake the hour. Dad, do you have some coffee? Coffee. You know, we'd love to have you, uh, love, the team would love to have you. Prayer team counselors. This one is, you know, at the end of the service, we invite people to prayer team. If you, you know, you're a counselor, you love people, you love praying for people, they're looking for more team members that would just be available to pray with people. If that's you, <clears throat> back there, prayer team, sign up. You'll love it. Such a great thing. D uh, deeper home host. If, you know, some of you have the gift of hospitality. Just love welcoming people in your home. Maybe that's your team. And, and then we're going to contact you regularly and say, hey, so-and-so needs some extra encouragement. Hey, so-and-so feels a little disconnected. Would you reach out to them? I, 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 this was kind of brand new. I love this uh, home host. Uh, that could be you. Child, uh, these last four uh, next-gen ministries, okay? Uh, child care team. You love babies. You love holding babies. You don't necessarily want one for yourself, but you can, you know, surf for an hour. That would be my team. I weren't so busy, but uh, child care team. You know, uh, we, we need, Tara, we need more help, right? Like verbal amen? Okay, yes, okay. Yes, we need help. And then the youth ministry, during a first and second service, we have things for, you know, up through four years old and then, uh, you know, grades one through fifth grade. Hey, we need more people serving the next generation. Hey, you got kiddo skills? Get there. 
Adam's not here today because he's preaching in Ocean View, but uh, you see Tara, she's ready for you. A surge in aftershock. Man, we have great sponsors already involved, but man, is it easy for them to be spread thin. Amen, James? <laughs> yep. Hey, it would, be so, it would be great to have some more teenage sponsors being there serving, um, in, you know, at Surge Middle School, uh, Aftershock High School, some great teams. Listen, you're, you being on one of these teams is a way for you to just improve your contribution for the success of us. Hey, as soon as we're done today, if you're not yet on a team, find one. You're going to love it. Uh, look at this next one. I love this next one. There, there are different gifts, right? The same spirit. Um, there are different uh, service, same Lord. And then there's different workings. Huh? I love this. Um, the Greek word is ergamaton. Ergamaton, it's the same word for our word energy. The focus of this word is the result of God's power working through us. It's God's power working through us. The ergamaton. There's different energies. Here's what I think, uh, and, and I love Colossians 1.29. Colossians 1.29, Paul says, and I contend with all the energy that Christ so powerfully works in me. It's, it points at Christ's energy. Any of you need a little more of Christ's energy in your life? Here's what this text is promising. Here's what, here's what you're gonna bring it down to. Here's what the differences really is. God provides everything we need. He provides everyone with, with gifts, different gifts, grace gifts. Then he provides opportunities to use the gift. And then here's what's so awesome. He actually provides the energy to use the gifts. He provides our gifts. He provides opportunities for the gifts. Ministry teams, you got a spot. And then he per actually provides the energy to fulfill and to succeed at it. There's only one thing missing. You know what's missing? Your availability. Your availability, your willingness to be used. Your contribution for the success of us. I want to bring it down to this. I want to encourage every one of you today to leave with a G3 perspective. When you study out this text, here, here, there's something that's just loud and clear. It's called a G3 perspective. I want every one of you leaving here with a G3 perspective. Here, here it is. Everything from his grace. Everything you have and all your abilities and talents and giftedness from his grace. Amen? That's the first G, his grace, from his grace. Here's the second G, for his glory. Everything you have, every, all your abilities and talents and giftedness, really, he expects you to use for his glory. From his gl grace, for his glory. Here's the third G, for our good. For our good, for the success of us, a G3 perspective. I love that. My contribution. <laughs> I mean, if I'm able to contribute anything, it's from his grace. And it's for his glory. Designed to be for our good. Make sense? Uh, I just want to make sure you got, you got it. So would you repeat after me? From his grace. For his glory. For our good. Believe it? That's koinonia. And that makes for such a great church. Amen? Lord Jesus, thank you today. Thank you for this, this word, this paragraph. That helps us remember some things that are the same. Uh, the same source. It's all from you. We confess that, we acknowledge that, we thank you for that. It's all from you. And Lord, we, we're reminded of the same goal. It's for our good. The success of us. And Lord, may we leave with a greater appreciation for what's different. 
we each have a different gift designed uh, for different opportunities and using your, your different energies. We're so grateful. Lord, I know it comes down to our, our availability. Would you empower us today to make sure that we are doing our part in contributing to the success of ministry at the crossing like never before. In the name of Jesus.